Uh, my name is Natalie Coates Pantopidan, and I work as a learning and quality leader for the reader. Um, I will be presenting together with Tris Richardson, who is head of patient experience, and uh, Jeanette Singleton, who's clinical lead and occupational therapist, uh, both at Warrington and Holton Hospitals. Uh, we will be telling you about how we've been enhancing patient experience with shared reading the past few years. So our partnership um, began, yeah, next slide please, that's fine. In, um, in July 2019, it's a partnership between the reader organization, Warrington and Holton Hospital and the hospital's charity. And then um, WHH is the first acute hospital to use shared reading within their services and particularly to use it as a part of their uh, diagnostic toolkit. We trained a total of 10 uh, healthcare professionals and hospital volunteers, and they are now equipped to deliver shared reading on different wards um, over the two sites. And you might be thinking now, so what is the reader and what is shared reading? Um, the reader as an organisation has been bringing books to life and people together for more than a decade. Uh, we read in a variety of different settings, such as community centres, libraries, prisons, schools, um, but also in hospitals now. Um, and what we do in the groups is that we meet once a week. We read a piece of great literature aloud in order to um, make it accessible to everyone, but also to make it a live experience that we share together. Um, and through that, we form really powerful human connections because we speak about what we read, how we feel about it, um, how we might feel helped by what we read, but also what it reminds us of. So it's conversation sparked from the wealth of reading aloud and great literature. And in our 2019 evaluation, 93% uh, of our group members said that attending a shared reading group makes them feel better. Um, so we believe that shared reading can help humans survive and live well. And I think it's been fantastic to see how the team at Warrington and Holton Hospital have, you know, tweaked this to suit um, their needs within the wards. And uh, Trish and Jeanette will now present these amazing results. So over to you guys, wherever you are. Thanks, Nat. Okay. So uh, following the training, the first readers group was set up in June of last year on our Forget Me Not uh, unit, who cares for our patients who have dementia. It's run by the activities coordinator and volunteers and is led by the OT team and includes therapeutic assessments. The sessions are always themed and incorporate poems and stories with props such as confetti, wedding photographs, whatever it is that the theme of that week is to enhance the experience for our patients. The patients are all invited to the um, sessions with an inv a personal invitation which again enhances their experience. The aims of the sessions are to help our patients with orientation, relationships, concentration and improve their mood and help them to engage both with staff and with other patients. It also allows patients to socialise together and always sparks lots of conversation. Some of the quotes from our patients are things like, I get to talk to people I usually wouldn't and it makes me feel so much better. So the next group which we set up was on, our, was on B1, which is our intermediate care ward, uh, where patients who are having ongoing rehabilitation prior to being discharged home. The group is led by a therapy assistant and a staff nurse and is also guided by one of the senior OTs in the team. The aim of the theme sessions are to help improve orientation, allow opportunity to reminisce and for patients who may be socially isolated a chance to mix with other people. And the patients are always keen to come to the next group and are always asking when the next group is. And then the last, last group that we set up here at Warrington is on our stroke ward, which was set up in November of last year. The group is led by our OT therapy assistant and speech therapy assistant and is guided by both myself as the OT lead and our speech therapist. Together, we identify goals for our patients, such as practicing their speech, improving their concentration, their attention, and most of all, improving and lifting their mood at what is often a very difficult time following a stroke. 
The group has most definitely helped our patients to reach their therapeutic goals, but just as importantly has brought patients together who have formed relationships. It has definitely reduced boredom and inactivity levels. And perhaps the most important thing, which I only heard last week during our readers group, was for the patients to laugh, which is not something that you readily hear on an acute ward, patients laughing together. Um, some of our feedback off that ward includes that the patients have said it's helped to focus their mind, keeps the brains ticking over. And the last one, it was lovely to talk to other people, listen to their stories, and some even made me laugh. So I'll hand you over to Trish. Hi. Hi. Um, so I'm just going to give uh, one example of how shared reading has changed a life. Just to let you know that I'm actually doing this on behalf of Rachel Bold, who's the team manager for acute medical therapies. Unfortunately, can't be here today, but I'd just like to say that she's been pivotal in keeping this um, project running. Um, so this gentleman was 89. He was admitted to hospital following a fall and increased confusion and he had a fracture to his humerus and he couldn't walk um, or and he, he was reduced ability to walk unaided. So he had lots of comorbidities, diabetes, dementia, macular degeneration and depression. He previously was living at home with daily care records and family support. He, he previously used a frame to walk. So when this patient gentleman was transferred to ward B12, he initially required the assistance of three staff and equipment to get from bed to chair. Now the ward therapist felt he would benefit from a period of inpatient rehabilitation. This was something they really felt quite strongly about. However, at that point in time, he often found it very difficult to engage with therapy and was often low in mood. So building the therapeutic rapport. So our patients get invitations to come to the reader session. So the war therapist recognised that there was a therapeutic value attending the readers group and it would be brilliant for this gentleman. So the therapist started talking to him about his life history, identified stories that would have meaning to him and he consented to attend and was given a personal invite. So one of the assessments um, is the mood assessment scale and they complete that pre-session, have the reader session and then assess it afterwards. So before the session started, as we said already, this gentleman was really struggling to engage and um, it was one out of five, which indicated a very low mood. So following the group session, the mood was reassessed and it was four out of five, indicating a good mood. He reported feeling definitely better and then when he, in subsequent sessions, he reported he always felt better in himself after attending these groups. So prompting was needed initially, really, to help him engage and interact with others when he first attended the group. But however, as soon as he started getting into these sessions, he was fully engaged. This was just the start. So why did the mood score change so significantly? So we asked this gentleman afterwards to explain how he felt and how the group made him feel during and after. And he said, I feel more relaxed. It must be the company. It makes me feel so much better. Importantly, I enjoy listening. I have no problem in doing it every week. And I get to talk to people I usually wouldn't. I get to vent my feelings. Next slide, please. Thank you. So really the positive participation here. So after attending the sessions, he started asking the group's questions to encourage discussions with other patients. Bear in mind, he would barely engage with therapists at the beginning. He was now actually getting so into the sessions that he was actually joining in. One of the sessions, um, the group shared a poem about a wedding and he asked, so who's the longest offender then, i.e. who's been married the longest? And he would often sing during the sessions. So what happened next? Well, obviously we talked about him needing rehabilitation um, and at the beginning it was felt that that possibly wasn't going to happen. But as time went on, we'll see. So the intermediate care team staff were encouraged to attend the ward and assess this gentleman with the ward therapist. And because we do all the assessments um, of this gentleman during the reader session, got all the evidence there. So the notes showed that he progressed with walking and transfers from assistance of three to assistance of one. 
He had consistent engagement in the sessions and he was able to follow instructions within the sessions and he took on an active role by encouraging others with discussions and the outcome was he was deemed appropriate for further rehabilitation and discharged. So where are we now? Shared reading, as you've heard now from my colleagues as well, it has. I've listened in on these sessions and they are amazing. So it's created incredible connections, powerful moments for the patients. I think there's the value, the patients actually feel empowered. So they find their voice, they feel valued when they contribute to the session as well, and they can reconnect with themselves. I have memories of sitting in on a session where we talked about Scouse, um, which is a Liverpoolian um, sort of uh, meat-based stew that could last for days, apparently, because I was told by one of the uh, patients that's what they did and then I heard about blind scouts which apparently is meat free <laughs> so um, it's amazing what you find out so we look forward to getting into the hands of more patients this year and then you've got the snapshot there of the statistics from one ward over 32 weeks and I'll let you read them because you can see it yourselves it's it's been amazing and I think one last thing, the multi-sensory approach, meaning it's accessible to all, is so incredibly important. When I sat in on the autumn um, session, um, there was a lady there who was blind, but everything was there. There were leaves. It was very tactile. When she heard it was autumn and there was Doris Day singing in the background, singing autumnly, she went, oh, autumn, it's about us. We're in the autumn of our lives. And it was just absolutely heartwarming. So that's that's us. <laughs>